Son of Fire from Zion Company, Spirit School. These teachings you are listening to is designed to propel you, to bless you. Enjoy and please subscribe. Thank you. Father, we step into that place, a place that we are really so familiar with. We're born out of that place. We are to return back into that place. Father Koshak, that, that dimension of your glory, the dimension of the secret dwelling of the Most High, that place that we put our rest in, that dimension that you've asked us to come live and move and have our being in. Father, we want to step into you. We want to step into all of who you are, Father. We want to ask that you will bring a dimension of revelation to each of us, Father, as how to step in to what you've opened up for us, Father, how to understand that place, that, that dwelling in the secret place of the Most High, that realm that opens up when we are in, in intimacy with you, Father, we were, when we're in communication with you, when we are sitting in that, the midst of your glory, when we spend time with all of who you are, Father, engaging your word, engaging the angelic, engaging with the seven spirits, engaging the four living creatures, Father, engaging with the 24 elders, engaging with each of the laws of Jerusalem and the laws of Zion, Father, just standing in that place, the 12 houses of Yahweh, stepping into the four cities within your kingdom, Father, engaging the seven heavens, Lord, understanding the beauty of the saints of all the men in white linen, Father, just stepping in to all of that which you've created, the angelic canopy, the angelic realm that has got billions of beings that we get to engage, and Father, you have opened up to us the mountains that we get to go into, Father. We get to understand who we are as we govern, as we sit in these places on the thrones as kings, coming into the atmosphere with the knowledge out of the four faces of Yahweh of who we are as sons and as daughters. And so we ask, Father, you open us up for greater revelation, greater dimensions of revelation. But let's be reminded, Father, that the place we truly seek is that secret place, the Koshak, that place we step into, that place, Father, where you reveal mysteries and secrets as we go deeper and deeper into who you are. And you begin to unfold that which has never been released, that which creation is longing for sons to know and walk in so that it can unfold in creation, so that all that which needs to come together can begin to fall into place. Father, we love you, we praise you, we glorify and magnify your incredible, phenomenal name as we step into it, Yod, Hey, Vav, Hey. Yod hey shin love hey. You are incredible, Father. We love you, Yahweh. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Okay, now I, I, I say uh, I preach so much. Preach this morning already the three times this week and again today. So I don't always know what I preach where. I try to follow it on my on my Facebook page and I try to follow it on, on YouTube. But I, I'm gonna see if I can go into Koshak which is the dwelling place, the secret place of the Most High, right? So it's really, again, it will be seen that we have engaged before, but it's, it's understanding and just coming to a, a conclusion that everything we do, everything we engage, everything that Yahweh opens up for us comes out of that place, that place of engaging Him, that place of sitting in the mystery and letting it unfold, right? Before I start, I want to say some things that Yahweh has opened up in creation for Spirit School, for the City of Zion, Gates of Zion, for um, Ignite Hubs all over the world, just the, the, the sons and the daughters that engage with this stuff. And I felt that, that as the Yahweh has uh, given me, I, I, I don't know if it's just something that I did, something that has been done, but it showed me something that... I had the ability to bring into the atmosphere the other day, and with Apostle Aaron Smith and his team that was there, it was uh, um, Craig Wells' uh, 20th anniversary in ministry, and they were all there, and it was just really a great time, but everybody, everybody that was asked to share something, shared something significant, and uh, so when I stood up there, the Lord showed me what I needed to share, and I, I've been sharing it ever since because it was really kind of interesting and it was kind of amazing to me, personally, for me, myself, and I. And I don't know how amazing it is for everyone else, but for me it was pretty good. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> but it was, uh, it was a connection of the four angelic beings that began to arc over the ministry that we joined. So myself and Apostle Craig joined in, in, in being sons of, of Yahweh, just coming together. Now, if you understand the history, my spiritual father, his spiritual father has the same spiritual father. You know, so we like a spiritual family that kind of is just connecting with each other and gateways and doorways of revelation is kind of just opening up for us. And so when um, 
uh, probably about six, maybe eight months ago, I was sitting there and the Lord started showing me uh, a bench of three angelic beings that uh, has always been in our ministry, that has connected with me, that's now joined to his ministry. And it was, it was Hazriel, which is a, a, a seraphim. It was uh, Zariel, <coughs> which is a um, warring angel. It was um, Zephkia, which is an archangel, archangel of knowledge. And then there was another angelic being that was uh, coming into the atmosphere that Yahweh is connected to the ministry, and his name was Markiel. And Markiel is a hunter angel, a, a, uh, brings in salvation, a salvation angel. And then Yahweh, on, on uh, Sunday last week, kind of connected these four angels. Now, of course, we understand that four opens up a window and a porthole, a gate. And then Yahweh began to arc each of these four beings with one of his four faces. Or representation of that which is in his faces, right? We had the ox, the lion, eagle, and man. And so we looked at um, Zephkiel, which was connected to the ox, which represents uh, legislation, right? And so I looked at this, and Yahweh said, well, the two creates an ark for that which is represented in it to come into the hearts of the sons. So he's bringing in a dimension of legislation in our revelation to open up to us that which we need to know about how to legislate what is coming into the atmosphere in this day. You know, he did the same with um, Zariel. Zariel is a warring angel and it's connected to the lion, which is the king, right? And we understand that it is a dimension of war that we don't understand because we used to war in one way and Yahweh really wants us to begin to understand the way that warfare is supposed to take place now. Now we have a, a glimpse of it, we use the courts, but there is a power that we carry that, that the arc that opens up between these two beings is going to bring into the atmosphere for us to have revelation of. Now it goes hand in hand with the black cloud Yahweh presented to creation where knowledge was the main thing he wanted to bring into the ecclesia. Uh, with revelation, knowledge, insight, understanding, with the fire, the lightning. Of course, we're beginning to understand the power of judgment and why we need to judge so that the equilibrium in creation can come into full play. Um, and the reason that it's not there is because we have a problem with judgment. right? But it all kind of hands in hand. He wants to teach us how to war and the lion and... Uh, Zariel opens up a ark for us to have the revelation in how to truly war. Of course, we understand that there's a time of serious warfare coming, but it's not going to be the way we think it's going to be. You know, it's in the position that you carry, it's in the place, the, the placement of who you are in creation that stops everything else dead in its tracks. And of course, needing that revelation. And then we have um, Hasriel. Now, Hasriel is a very, 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 I don't even know how many times to say that to bring the expression out into position, but an extremely powerful being that I met in my room in the spirit. And it's weird because I was in my bedroom and it was wrapped around my bed, but it was much bigger than my bed. It was much bigger than my room. It's much bigger than what I can put in natural, but I was also much smaller. But as I came into the room, I remember just kind of having. A, a weird moment and kind of ran out because as I came into the room it breathed on me and I was set on fire. I ran out all freaked out and I like uh, kind of dumb walked back in and I'm like okay, okay I'm sorry what, what was happening here um, but it was incredible as he joined to our ministry I began to realize that it is a very very powerful being connected to us and Yahweh said that he is connecting it to the eagle which is if we understand it represents the oracle. Um, the art that they are formed is to bring a dimension of the word of Yahweh into place so that we can begin to understand the power of the word of Yahweh. Not in the, not the Bible, but the power of the word. And I know that it brings a lot of revelation from the living letters into play, understanding them, engaging them, and of course Yahweh wanting us to truly know the power of what we say as oracles. When we speak, what opens up? When we speak, what is being created? Because in our words, of course, we are the body and it's the head. So it's not our words. It's not what we say. It's what he's wanting us to say. He says, I put my desires in your heart, um, which is a powerful thing, right? And of course, then he um, expressed uh, Mark Hill, which is a hunter angel, which I, I relate to salvation because when I met him the first time, um, he came into the atmosphere wanting to bring in a harvest. The time wasn't ready, and Yahweh is in the process of teaching us the true way of harvesting, and it's connected to the priest, where we always wanted to bring the people to God. Yahweh is wanting to teach us how to bring God to the people. You know, that's the understanding that we don't have, but that's what the priest does. 
the priest stands in a position where he opens up the gateway to bring God to the people. You know, that's what we carry. We carry that dimension of Yahweh. We're in his image. We carry his image and knowing how to do it, him expressing that fullness to us in everything we do is how we open up. Now Yahweh begins to flow this into creation, so salvation and the measure that he desires for it to come into play can begin to flow into motion, if that makes sense. Of course, each one of these gateways that's opened up through the ox that's formed is connected to earth, water, air, and fire. And each of them has its function. Now it becomes three, the two becomes three, or the four becomes two, that becomes three. And of course, each of those letters in the Hebrew has a greater meaning. So uh, four is the gateway, two is the establishment of a witness, but in the same breath, an ark. And of course, three is the establishment of governance. You know, so there's so much play coming in, and there's so much revelation that we want us to bring into the ecclesia, so much he wants us to open up for, and we need to be ready. And of course, this is what I'm going to touch on today, I believe, is how we get to be prepared for it. You know, Ian makes a statement, and he says, I really don't care about the eschatology of the church, what you believe regarding revelation, it doesn't matter to me, my theory is the pan theory, right? Uh, engage with Yahweh, love Yahweh, and everything will pan out perfectly. You know, that kind of makes a heck of a lot more sense to me than anything else. You know, because revelation and the revelation that the church has brought to us just brings fear upon God's people, right? So knowing your, your creator, stepping into him, uh, brings that peace that's needed for the times that we're in and understanding who we are. Now, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in whom I will trust. And it's really Yahweh's desire for us to understand what it means to live and move and have our being in Him. That place where the secrets are revealed. That place where the mysteries is opened up to us. You know, and it's a place of patience and rest. It's a place where I sit and I just engage and, and have His vibration, His frequency overshadow me. You know, we always want, because we've understood him to be the bride, or we're the, we're the bride, he's the groom. We've understood to be in that place where we say, tell him how much we love him. And, and you know, it's that hugging and that cuddling and that kissing uh, in our hearts. That's what we presume uh, it will be like, you know. But understanding that that's not what he desires. He wants us to know how it, it, it will be to be one with him, how to be the body and how he is the head. And to be in that midst where the body knows exactly what's going on in it at all times, you know, because it's connected to the head. The, whole, the head is that place of thought, that place of revelation, knowledge, and understanding. And it knows what to do. It knows how to do it, especially when the head is that of Yahweh himself. You know, when it's placed upon us, we begin to understand we're all knowing. We have all power. We can be at anywhere at any given time because we are that in tune with God. And of course, it's his desire to be in the midst of him to that measure. On a daily basis, right? And it's not that, well, no, how can I work? How can I look after my kids? How can I clean the house? How can I do all these things? Go to the gym, enjoy my life, and still engage Yahweh 24 7. It doesn't seem possible, right? But it's understanding who you are as a spirit being and the capacity you have to engage with Him 24 7 and have it download into your soul and your body all that has been engaging. And of course, eventually there will be a time where we start going with soul and body into the kingdom of heaven as we engage it more. It's a, a change of my belief system that has to come to play, right? Yes. We are living in the midst of a very trying and sometimes fearful time. So we kind of understand where it looks like everything is falling apart right now. Mm -hmm. you know, there's so much weirdness going on in creation, it's not even funny. Everything that man has put their trust in is being shaken to it, to the very core. The truth of the matter is there is nothing that you can put your trust in and no one that you can turn to but Yahweh. And we understand that to the measure that he wants to release that in us. But in the same breath, he wants us to have the knowledge of how to bring alignment to what's happening in creation. Now, I believe that what's happening in creation is due to alignment, due to what the sons have been doing in creation. We might look at COVID as this thing, but I've said this so many times, it's a diversion of what's happening behind the scenes. And so once everything that's happening behind the scenes in the nations of the world comes to play, we'll see how the equilibrium comes into place, where the balance out, where Yahweh says, well, I need my sons to bring uh, everything into position so that I can bring restoration through them into creation. That's his desire, right? Yes. Fear has laid hands on man's hearts, 
and they are running to and fro looking for answers from any source they can find because uh, of the things that are coming on the world. And of course, when you have rest in your heart regarding who Yahweh is, um, you know how much he loves, how much he cares, and how he really just wants to bless. And that's where that place uh, in, in, his, in him, that place called Koshek, it's really the, the gold piece, the gold nugget to your engagement. Because that's where everything brings you, that's where he brings you to a place of rest. I love that place. It's probably my favorite place. Well, I mean, we live in that place, right? It's his desire. We look at disease, poverty, social, economic unrest. I don't know if you've seen the Netflix movie called, uh, I think it's called uh, Social, The Social mm -hmm. Dilemma. And uh, anybody, yes. you saw it? I mean, that's exactly what's happening right now, right? I mean, it's a plan from the enemy to destroy us. Because, I mean, what generation have you ever seen does what we do? You know, in our, on our phones all day long, looking at a screen all the time. Now, there's new apps coming up almost daily to take your focus off of everything else to engage on your little screen, mm -hmm. right? And from there, they can take information and put it on your Facebook because that's what you're interested in. And when you see it on your Facebook, you'll engage it more. It's, it's absolutely crazy. Unrest, economic unrest, uh, weather-related calamities, earthquakes, uh, falling governments, and war have taken a toll on mankind and there seems to be no remedy, remedy for man's uh, problems, right? It's just what it looks like. I'm sure that's what the world thinks when they're looking through the eyes of devastation right now. But we are the sons. We have to be in a place where we know what Yahweh is doing. You know, people say, well, no one knows what God's doing because he's in charge. No, remind yourself that he's actually not in charge. He's given you dominion over creation. You know, and the chaos that's in the midst of us and has been for years before COVID even came, it's because of men. Uh, the sons of Yahweh not doing their function, not functioning in the blueprints that was given to them from the very beginning. But now that we're beginning to step into that place, of course things are changing. That's why we look at creation right now and say, whoa, what's happening? Why is this 2020 such a weird, strange year? Because we've woken up, we've answered the call, and something is changing and shifting. Yes. <coughs> Because of their unbelief, they have trusted that which cannot satisfy their needs and have turned away from their Heavenly Father who cares deeply for their welfare. To escape the storms of life, sin and, uh, sin and Satan causes, there is only one place that man can find refuge and that is under the shadow of God's protection. Now we know this, but we go beyond that because it's not just for my protection. Yes, of course, the babies and the younger generation and their faith will want that, but, but when you're a, a mature son of, of the Most High God, you're sitting in the place, that secret place, to engage with what needs to reveal and release to us, right? Because what needs to take place is the mature sons in creation has to begin to bring things into place for everybody, because once everything is in place, it will open up the gates. Yes. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, um, and in all ways acknowledge Him. And he will direct your path. So this is something that I believe sons and daughters are doing on a daily basis. We don't do our own thing. You might say, well, yeah, I do my own thing sometimes. But, but that's not what he's talking about here. Your heart is directed to him. Your life is directed to him. I said something the other day in the church. And I, I, I just wanted to go back and kind of correct it. Because I said something. I said uh, I struggle to um, engage with unbelievers. You know, and I was really talking to the, about the gym that I go to, the CrossFit gym, and I realized, well, really the people that I engage with in the CrossFit gym are not unbelievers. They go to church on Sunday, they're all born again, they love Jesus, but not to the measure that the sons engage. You know, they don't talk about God all the time. They have their own conversations. They, they're in adultery in some way, fashion or form. They, they have their basic sins that the church would call sin. And they do the stupid things and they're into pornography. And they have a basic normal life that I guess you live in the world. But they go to church. They love God. They probably go to heaven when they die. Um, and so I wasn't meaning that they are unbelievers. I was just saying I struggle to relate with these people because I just want to talk about God. Realized in the same breath that they don't want to do that, so I am have one option. Either I'm just going to go sit in the corner by myself and nobody wants to talk to me, or I'm going to change my perception and how to present who I am as a son and being able to engage with them. Right? Because I believe that's how the world needs to know. It's not about what I say. I can talk about Jesus all day long and eventually I'll have no friends. 
Right? But if I can place myself in the position where I live and move and have my being in, and I can come into the atmosphere with that glory, I don't have to talk about him mm -hmm. yeah. because he will emanate out of me. Yes. And I think that's kind of where we need to be. You know, the world yes. is looking for Christ. They not want to hear him come out of your mouth. They want to see him in who you are. Yes. Do you love them? Do you care for him? Can you engage with him? Can you have a conversation with an unbeliever without making the guy feel like he's a piece of rubbish? You know, because that's our judgment. And I, I say judgment because Yahweh doesn't want us to judge to death. Our judgment has to be to life. And, and, and judging someone to life is you complimenting them. You're talking good about them. You, uh, you know, someone did something to my wife that, in essence, really, all I want to do is I want to crush his face. So he, he did something. Um, I don't want to talk about it too much, but she told me about it. And she said that she dealt with it, and she really doesn't want me to, to hate the guy or anything like that. I need to forgive him and get over it. And the first couple of days, I thought to myself, if I see him, I'm going to strangle him. And uh, I'm going to do it in such a way that it's going to be quiet, quick, and he's going to know that I know what he did, and uh, he'll respect me. You know, because it felt like what he did was disrespectful to me, very disrespectful to my wife, and it was just weird. But Yahweh says to me, I need you to love him more now that you know that he doesn't know you know, but you know that you he you know what he did, and he doesn't know that you know. But when he finds out that you knew, and yet you've loved him nonetheless, there will be a change in his heart. Amen. So I'm like, oh, well, yeah, I don't know if I want to do that. Right. But just find myself doing it anyway. Not wanting to do it, but just wanting to do it. It's like Yahweh is getting his sons to a place where we are above everything. Where stuff like that, although it bothers me, and I, I'm like, I can't believe someone would do that. But I will love him, I will engage with him, commune with him. Although I look at his ways and I think, oh, I want to punch you in the face. And to be honest, I really do. It's like really, really, really something I want to do. But am I going to do it? No, of course I'm not going to do it. I'm going to love him and I'm going to care for him because that's where Yahweh is placing this generation of sons and daughters in the world, not to say stuff, because, you know, I love what Francis the C.C. said. He said, go into the world and preach the gospel, right? And if you have to, use words. So, so stand in your position as a son of the Most High God and let that emanate in you. And when you live in the koshet, when you live in that secret place, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. And I mean, I really, I mean, I have nothing to say to these people. I love them, and they're all phenomenal people, like, really. And, and every now and then there's a, a couple that will engage with me and have a, a, a you know, conversation with me, and it's nice, but I'm not going to try and force myself in a conversation, you know, but I, I don't know what to say to them. It's like, you know, understand that every relationship I have, I am the guest speaker, and people come talk to me. Right, that's how it is. Now, in a normal gym section, everyone's got earphones on, nobody wants to talk to you, and you don't really talk to anybody. It's, it's, a, it's a, a very special day if somebody talks to you, if you, even if you get to talk to somebody. And in a CrossFit gym, it's different. No one's got earphones on, everybody's engaging, everyone's talking. It's a very social place. And I don't want to be awkward. So I have to set my religious views down and engage with these people. They are phenomenal. They are beautiful, amazing people. But I couldn't talk to them. Now it's changing because I'm engaging it. I want to be there. I want to engage with them. I want to talk to them. But I don't want their ways to affect me. But they've got some ways. They do some things that make the head, hair, back of my hair raise. You know, my back of my, the hair on the back of my head, which I shave off. But anyway, right? It's, it's just some strange things. But I've, I've fallen in love with them because Yahweh has shown me what they can become. He's shown me what the world, if we put them in the right position, can be. Those who don't follow him in a full measure. We have the capacity with these gates and these, arc, these, these different arcs that's opened up to bring people into the fullness of Christ in a measure that's never happened before. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the trap, of the trapper, and from the uh, from the pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings he shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You know, I love the fact that Yahweh's desire is to deliver us. 
His desire is to put you in a position in your life where nothing can come to you and bring destruction. You know, when he says no weapon formed against you will prosper, it sounds ridiculous because, well, if you have a gun and you shoot it at me, I'm going to be dead. But there's going to be a day when that gun is going to go right through me, make a hole in my shirt on this side, make a hole on the other side, and I, I'm going to be fine. Because my body and my soul is living in my spirit, and nothing can hurt me. I've seen my tomorrow today. And when we get that revelation and we understand that, we've shifted our DNA from where it is now um, connected to my mother and my father, going through the process where that is seared, and my DNA is connected to my father, and the fullness of yod hey vav hey, it changes things. But it's that process of engaging, going deeper and deeper. The secret place provides protection from the enemy and the word of God builds our faith that literally becomes a shield that, uh, that deflects all the attacks of the enemy. Knowing who we are and uh, to whom we belong will greatly uh, aid us to our quest to defeat all the satanic schemes. When, uh, you know... When we get this revelation of that place that Yahweh has opened up beyond the veil, that, that everybody can go to but most are afraid of. Everybody has the capacity through the desires Yahweh has placed in us, of course, and the blood is shed on the cross. We have the capacity to go and live and move and have our being in Him, see it, touch it, feel it. But we are so afraid to do it. But those who can has the knowledge of what it means to be protected by Him. You know, that nothing comes to my house. You know, if I look at, and it sounds crazy, so my wife gets a little bit sick, she got the flu, and uh, of course she has to go do her, her boss, urges her to get a um, COVID test done, so she gets the test, and it, it takes like five days for the test to come back. So basically, by the time the test comes back, you're fine. Mm -hmm. You don't even need to be in isolation anymore. But it comes back negative. But what I loved about this, she was supposed to go to a ladies' meet, a ladies uh, retreat, with some of the students in uh, Luffy, you know, in uh, Baton Rouge. About six people plus her seven. And when she texted them and told them what was happening, each and every one of them said, don't worry, we don't care, come. Right? I like that. That's what we need to understand. Mm -hmm. Who We are protected by Yahweh. When the test came back, we were surprised. Because it can't come to us. Are we going to get sick? Yeah, sure. Are we going to fight it and it's not going to last for long? Yes, of course. You know, Yahweh has the capacity to open these gateways for us if we engage it to the measure that it's open. It's for us. It's not to work against us. Above all, I love this, and we have to understand that. I'm going to see if I can explain it. Uh, above all, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Uh, and take the helmet of salvation um, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. But uh, let's just go back a little bit. It says, above all. So immediately when you read that in your natural capacity, you think, oh, this must be the most important part, and Yahweh wants us to understand how important our faith is. Yes, of course, our, our faith is very important, but that's not what it's saying. What it's saying is, above all, take the shield. So in the day that uh, Paul wrote this in Ephesians, the understanding of the Roman army was is that it had these massive shields that looks like a door. And what they would do when they go into war, and there's a, a, a rain of arrows coming to them. They will lift their shield up above all. And they will sit under it, and they will be protected. And this is something he's trying to open up to us. Above all, your faith is what takes you to the place in the Koshek. Because I don't just go there because it's opened up for me, and Yahweh's come, and His heaven's opened up, and it's pulled me by the lock of my hair, or by my beard, into this realm, and now I can sit there and be protected. I do it by faith. I step in by the desires I have to be with Him, and by faith I step into this realm, and by faith I begin to realize that this is where my protection is, because that's where the mystery unfolds. That's where it begins to show and reflect who He is to me, so the gateways for who I am to become can open up to me. Right? It's being in that place where he reflects it. Of course, we understand that his desire for me is to understand my salvation and how my mind and my belief system needs to change. It is desire for me to understand the word and the power that the word carries in my life. Not just the Bible, not just that which is spoken, but all dimensions of the word. And especially now that the living letters has opened up through Eber the way that it has. Because it brings us revelation that's never been released into creation. Because the, the sons, now see, the Hebrew, the Hebrew people can engage it, but they're engaging it without Christ. 
So there's a measure of truth in the mystery that it brings, but when you engage it to the place within those letters where the fiery gate explodes to you and pulls you in, and you're sitting in that place of mystery, and it begins to unfold another dimension of revelation that's not written, that's not written, that's when the true life is breathed into you. And that's what Koshek brings you. That's what that, that place that Yahweh has opened up for us to sit in brings us to. You shall not be afraid of terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall to your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Now, it's not, okay, in, in the Psalms, obviously, when David writes this, he's talking about people. But when we read this, we have to understand it's not man. Our war is not against flesh and blood, right? We understand that. It's against the demonic entities, the powers, the principalities that want to kill, sin, and destroy. And understanding my place, when this comes, where, I'm, where am I? I am sitting in that place within the heart of the Father, dining. <laughs> where I am having a feast. Uh, where my enemy can't even come in. My enemy just looks at it and he's freaked out because I, he's trying to kill, he's trying to steal, and I'm having a brunch with my father. <laughs> it's a the distracting, big, fat, nasty. <laughs> and I think Yahweh wants to bring us to that place where when we realize what is available for us, the enemy loses his grip. The normal has a place in my life, although I might do things in my normal day-to-day -day ways that the church could frown upon because they have made a do-do list and some of the things I do is on their do-do list. It might not be something that they agree with. It might not be something that they think is a good idea. Now, maybe it's not a good idea, but it doesn't take me off of my, my, my scroll plan. It doesn't take me off of the mark that Yahweh has set for me to go into. So I'm not missing the mark, therefore I'm not sinning. Just because they think that what I'm doing is a sin doesn't mean that it's a sin. I'm very excited, I'm going to be for another tattoo on my leg. Now the church frowns upon that, and it's a big, fat, nasty sin, and I don't hear people say that all the time. You have tattoos, I hope you enjoy how. Like my salvation is based on what I do to my body. It's not, right? It's about my faith in Christ. But anyway, I don't want to go into detail with this thing. There's other things as well, but it's, it's just the knowledge of understanding who I am and what Yahweh has showed me, what I agreed upon. And what I've agreed upon is what I'm into, is what I'm doing, what I'm constantly focused on, and everything else will fade into the plans that Yahweh has for it. Yes. It's all about us. It's all about us. Destruction and death lurks in the shadows, seeking some unsuspecting soul out for, from under the protection of God's mighty hand, right? Satan lurking around, seeking you made of valor. That's his focus, right? And I'm not putting any, giving you any glory, but that's what he does. You know, he's done it through sickness, drug and alcohol addiction, murder, suicide, um, and terror of all kinds, right? Um, they are consuming God's people by the millions. It's what people focus on. You know, I, I see it every day. Not to mention acts of nature such as storms, earthquakes, fires, of course, hurricanes and, and tornadoes and, and all these things that we really have governance over. Now, the Bible tells us that it's going to come. But we have the measure to deal with it, although it's going to come, and yes, it has to be there. We are supposed to govern it so it brings life instead of death. Does that make sense? And of course, that governance, that revelation is given to you in that secret place. That's why it's always heartbeat for us to stay in that place. If you look at the news, it's always focused on some kind of a catastrophic accident or some another fear-provoking situation that brings about depression and anxiety. Uh, I mean, if you just walk into Walmart, all of a sudden, all the water is gone. I mean, they, they, they would stack all this water in front. When you walk in, grab water because it might not be there because there's a hurricane coming. And, and instead of the suns coming together and saying, okay, well, we know what to do and let's just do it. You know, and, I, and I always try to teach this, but I know people listen with their butts. Because what do you do? What do you don't do? You don't, you don't tell the, the hurricane to stay in the ocean. Why? Because that brings storm surge. Right? You don't tell it to move there and move there. And it does what the other one does. Zigzag, 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 zigzag. Doesn't know what to do. Because one's saying, well, you're not coming near my house. The other one's saying, well, you're not coming near my house. And that guy said, well, you're not coming near my house. So we send it to Texas. We send it there. We send it there. Instead of governing it. 
That's the place that Koshek opens up for me to give me a revelation of what needs to be done with whatever comes into the atmosphere with the knowledge that Yahweh wants to open up to me. Right? You guys okay? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I love this because it says, No evil shall come to me. Because you have made, um, you have made, because you have made the Lord uh, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Yes. We have to stand on that. Yes. But understanding in the same breath, knowing who I am, because when I, when I know who I am and I come into the atmosphere with that knowledge, I carry the kingdom of heaven. Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand, so the kingdom of heaven is right here. So when I'm connected to both realms in the measure that I'm supposed to be, seated in Christ in heavenly places, knowing that with my feet on the earth and my head in the heavens, I'm governing both realms. I'm co with Yahweh in, in governing and creation, and I, am the, I have dominion over the earth. Understanding that no matter what happens where I'm at, Satan has no place in me or near me because I carry the kingdom of heaven where he has no hand in and he cannot come into. Amen. That is like a, a, a way, a sound wave that will push him out. The frequency does not line up. <clears throat> it seems like everything we look, everything, everywhere we look, evil is uh, prevalent. <laughs> It just seems like that. It's not true. And even, of course, it's not our focus anymore, right? We don't look for evil. But it seems like it's just everywhere. And Yahweh is wanting to change our focus, right? Uh, it's, it's disease and all, of all kinds spreading across the world. We've had bird flu, swine flu, and of course, cancer, diabetes, AIDS. It's killing thousands of people and new mysterious strains of airborne bacteria and, and all kinds of weird things happening. Now we've got COVID and it's really... How many people have had COVID and are still alive? Exactly. How many people die of the flu every day, right? Exactly. But now we have to wear masks. I have not worn a mask in such a long time. I don't even know what it feels like anymore. Nice. And no one says anything to me. Yeah, right there with you. And I have a mask. I think, well, why are you not wearing a mask? I'm wearing it on my finger. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, guy the other day. So you're just not wearing a mask. I'm like, dude, I am too pretty to wear a mask. <laughs> <laughs> he laughed, walked off. Don't ask me stupid questions anyway. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Good. The Christian has the benefit, uh, I say Christian, I even hate that word. I say I hate that word, but we're more than Christians, right? It's so limited. It's, it's the anointed ones. Uh, little Christ. You know, no, no, I'm not a little anointed one. I am more than that. I'm a son of the most high God. Yes. Yeah. Right? I'm in his image, in his likeness. I am omnipotent. I have all the power he carries. I have all the wisdom he carries. I stand in his full of my spirit man can be uh, in many, 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 many places all at once. You know, don't limit me to what you perceive he is. Because he's even more than what you have in your heart. More than what you can ever fathom. And he's created me in that same likeness. Okay, well we have the benefit plan written in the blood of Yeshua 2,000 years ago. And the promise, healing and deliverance from all disease. Now, when you understand who you live in, who you move in, and you're being in, stuff doesn't come to me. You know, I look at my family. We've been in America for six years. Of course, we don't have any medical plans. And um, no one gets sick. And when my, like my wife gets sick, and uh, I get sick a little bit, yeah, a little bit there. But it's never been a catastrophic thing that stopped us in our tracks. You know, I've been doing preaching like this every single day, uh, week after week after week, for years at a time with no stop. And uh, I've never been sick enough not to do it. You know, my kids go to school, they're at home, they never get sick. Well, one son has medical aid. We don't even know. We haven't used it in so many years. We have to reapply every now and then. <laughs> because he doesn't use it, they will just cancel it. Wow. <laughs> no, I mean, yes, it's God's mercy on us, but we are beginning to understand who we are. You know, I look at my wife and how she's unfold from, from this little girl that just hang around me with her ministry, look after the kids, to the woman that she is today. You know, just getting a scroll, beginning to understand, but that's not what I'm called to do. This is what I'm called to do. Now she's doing what she's supposed to do, and I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. It's like it, it adds to it, and it makes this big, massive explosion of exactly what God had planned, mm -hmm. which changes everything, you know? Yes. Because that comes out of that place, the Koshek. Blessed. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forgive uh, and forget 
none of his benefits, who forgives all our iniquities, who heals all our diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfy your mouth with good things, um, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. <laughs> yeah, I say this all the time. I know it's a little bit, a little bit, I don't know, it's weird, but I feel stronger today than what I've ever been. You know, I, I remember when I was young, okay, I, could, I could jump really high and I could do all kinds of martial art moves that I wouldn't even want to try and do now. But in, in my actual physical body, I feel stronger than what I've ever been. You know, I feel like there's something that's changed in my DNA that draws me to a deeper place in Yahweh, that, that opens up doorways in the natural for me to do things I could never do. You know, I mean, I'm stronger in my bench, I'm stronger in my squats, I'm deadlifting weights I couldn't even begin to think I could do. It, it's amazing how Yahweh can open up things. Now you say, well, you know, it's not about your physical body. Well, yes, it is, actually. Now we need to begin to understand the value of this thing that my body, uh, what my body is, what it's connected to. Now, does everybody have to be um, training two hours a day? No, that's my preference, is what I desire, is what I enjoy. Yahweh has never, ever, ever told me to stop training. Matter of fact, he's encouraged me to engage because that is my time of engagement. Now, it's not my only time of engagement, but it's a pretty good time to engage with Yahweh. Your body is doing its own things, and my soul and my spirit can go to places. And it does. I love this. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot upon the stone. Now this is Psalm 91, and it's Yahweh's desire for you to understand that every messenger out there was created for your benefit. And he's of course teaching us how to engage with them so that we can begin to work with them in the measure that they meant to be worked with. So that what needs to unfold with them and us working together can begin to come into fruition. God's promise of protection uh, are his angelic messengers sent to render <clears throat> aid to those that have been purchased with the blood of Yeshua. Angels are on duty 24-7, guarding us and protecting us and teaching us, guiding us, and there to help us to be part of who we are and what is written on our scrolls. That's why we have to learn how to work with Him. And of course, as you sit in that place of mystery, that, that secret place, Yahweh begins to unfold to you the understanding of each angelic being that's part of your life. Now, I've engaged with several angels, but the four that have stick with me uh, for a very long time, and it's been in my memory that I've engaged over and over again, is the four that's created a window. You know, three of those four is a bench of three in our ministry. You know, it's just amazing how when you engage with these beings, they begin to settle in and establish what's, what they're meant to be doing. It doesn't just automatically happen. It took me almost seven years for these four angelic beings to trust my ways enough to present themselves in the manner that they have. If that makes any sense. How are you guys doing? I'm almost done, I think. The angel of the Lord uh, encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. See, I, I, we've gone through the whole angelic thing, but I know that Yahweh's desire through the angels is for us to begin to understand that we have to work with them. We have to understand that they are there to protect us, and they do protect us. I mean, most of us should have been dead by now, right? I mean, I look at my life and I think, wow, the fact that I'm alive is incredible. The amount of accidents I've been in and I didn't have a mark on my body is incredible. Um, just the way that Yahweh has protected me through the angelics that's assigned to my life. And now that I'm engaging with them, how they're opening up revelation, how they're opening up teachings to me. They're giving me insight. They're giving me a knowledge. They're literally guiding me into position regarding who I am. They're showing me what needs to be done in my ministry, what needs to be done in creation as I go to and throw, led by the Spirit of Yahweh into creation to do certain things. How, where, what. And it's all forming a plan for creation to come into full fruition. And of course, it's all part of my, my destiny, that which is written on my scroll. And they're helping and aligning. And I love that. Yeah. They shall thread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall tramp under your foot. We understand that Satan is the enemy of mankind, but in the same breath, he's not the last enemy. I, I want to say this because we put all our focus on Satan, but the Bible says our last enemy is death. Mm -hmm. Now, the last enemy being death doesn't mean that I must die, and then the enemy is over, overcome. 
Now I have to overcome death. But Satan is an enemy nonetheless. It's the enemy of mankind with a mandate of destruction and death. He moves throughout the world seeking someone to devour. But we understand he's a Mickey Mouse puppet with a mic. Right? And he goes, meow, but it sounds like a big roar. Remember, the Bible even tells us one day when you see who was causing all the devastation and creation, you will literally laugh because he is just absolutely a foe and nothing more. Hey guys, you okay? Mm -hmm. Sometimes references uh, as a lion <laughs> um, and at other times a serpent, his uh, attributes resemble a beast with um, absolutely no compassion or mercy for anybody. So this understanding, we know him. I don't want to talk too much about him, but I want you to understand that you have the capacity to devour him. You know, we have, and I, and I actually have a, a gentleman, and I can't wait for this. Um, all I have to do is I have to design it on a piece of paper. But a friend of mine has one of those uh, uh, water um, lasers that can cut through steel. So whatever you put on your computer, he can print on a five millimeter thick piece of steel. And my sword that Yahweh gave me is a specific shape and it looks in a specific way and I can see it in my mind and I can draw it on a piece of paper and he's going to cut it out for me. Nice. And so I'm very excited about that. Once he's cut it out, I'm going to start designing it, buffing it, making it look good. And when I'm done around and everybody will have to see it. But the idea is that Yahweh has given me this not to fight like I used to, but to have the capacity to know in my heart that no enemy can stand in my midst. No demonic entity, no power, no principality, no, no king, no giant, no dragon can be in my midst and continue in his ways. Because of who I am, because of who Yahweh has given us, uh, what Yahweh has given us, and the power that we walk in as sons. Just knowing that authority, that yes, we can bind Satan, and yes, we can cast demons out, and yes, we can do the things that has been done over the years. But in the same breath, <clears throat> in the knowledge that Yahweh is pouring in, to the sons today. We have a position, and in that position I move, and when I move, everything else in front of me has to go. It's a different type of war, it's a different understanding. Yes. Right, we work through the court system to deal with certain issues, with certain mandates they have, with certain petitions they desire to bring into creation, and we stop a dead in its tracks. That's a form of warfare. But in the same breath, we get to the place where, we, where there's, one can take down a thousand. So one son standing in this position in creation, there's a thousand demonic entities that's falling right there. Two standing next to each other, there's 10,000. I don't even know what three does. I don't even know what four does. Now, nevertheless, a thousand or 10,000 or 100,000 suns standing in the atmosphere. Satan has no place to go. Amen. I love that. Yes. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this. That the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I love that. <clears throat> because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him. I will show him my salvation. I love that. This is Yahweh's desire for each of us. To walk in a realm that's not natural. To have a blessing and favor upon our lives that's not natural. That's completely supernatural. That, that the whole of creation stops and turns towards us to see a son walk by. I love that. The above reference scripture sounds like a marriage vow, a promise of, of all who would call upon the name of the Lord, and so it is. Of course, it's Yahweh's desire for us to step into that level of intimacy with Him. It is the very heart of the Father to, to have that level of intimacy with each of us and to bring us into His heavenly family in the measure that He's opened up. The relationship between a man and a woman bound in holy you know, in marriage, is the relationship God wants with us. Now, of course, we've discussed this many times, not the same, the same covenant, that you're mine and everything that's yours is mine, everything that's mine is yours, that we all become one. We step into each other and we melt into each other. It's like my eyes is your eyes, your ears are my ears. It's the same thing. We are in each other, one. That's the relationship he wants. That's you living in him, moving in him. That's a place called Koshek, that secret place that we need to completely find ourselves in all the time. Amen. 
For the love of Christ compels us because we judge this, thus, that if one died for all, then all died, and he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. I'm going to close with this. It's, it's understanding that, that it's not I who live, it's the Galatians 2.20. It's not no longer I live, but Christ lives in me. The knowledge that I'm in Him, I'm one, one with Him. He surrounds me. His love is for me, not against me. He pours into me daily. But it's being beyond the veil. It's not just sitting on this side by faith. I trust that He loves me. It's stepping in, sitting in Him, physically being in His midst, seeing the love that He has for you, letting that form over you on a daily basis so that you can begin to frame the life that He's destined for you. So that the creation can look at sons and say, yes, let's, let's do what needs to be done. Let's come into that place of complete salvation, complete um, alignment, and begin to work together, open up for all to have in the measures that's theirs, right? Because at the moment, some have too much, others have too little. And I'm talking about creation in itself, cities, nations. You know, some African countries have gold, but they have no money. You know, they've got all this gold, but they've got no food for their people. How does that even work? Right. How do you have gold? How does your, your supply of gold feed nations, but you don't have anything? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense. So the equilibrium would be for everything to come into play uh, in, in perfect harmony. That is how Yahweh obviously wants us to come out into his full measure. But we are the ones that have to bring that into place. And of course, his desire for us is to find that place in, in his heartbeat, the dwelling um, dwelling in the secret place of the most high God, Koshek, finding yourself in the midst of him on a daily basis and letting him soak in and over you as often as you possibly can, right? Amen. Father, we just want to thank you and praise you. And as we begin to find this place in our hearts, Father, we begin to understand that it's not about works. It's not about trying to pray all day. It's not about trying to be in the Word, reading all day long. It's not trying to, to just find ourselves in the Spirit 24-7 in the way that we perceive it to be. Because yes, we are in the Spirit 24-7. We begin to understand that as a Spirit being, I live in that realm. That is who I am. And I'm, I have a, a, a understanding of that realm. I have a perception of that realm because I am a Spirit and I'm in that realm all day long. And I'm in and out into different places as you open up revelation to me as you send me as a Spirit into different places, different countries, different nations, different dimensions. <coughs> We are beginning to download this into the soul. It's beginning to affect the body as we change our belief system. And we are shifting into that glorified state. It might be a very slow process, Father, but we are moving towards it daily by practicing, practicing, going deeper, higher, wider. And we want to thank you, Father, that you've opened up this place for us to live and move and have our being in. Father, we as your sons are beginning to change. We're beginning to express your glory in its full measure. And by, by, But before we know it, we are going to live in that full measure of your fire and releasing that measure of fire into all of creation, in our families, into our workplaces, and everywhere we go. And salvation will be the next step for all as things line up. Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you, my King. You are majestic. In the name of Yeshua. Amen.